Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you guys tonight? Good. Thanks for coming out. Um, I'm sure all of you would rather be outside right now enjoying the lovely weather, but um, we appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, uh, we've got a seminar prepared for you about back pain, and I know it's funny. We haven't done a seminar on musculoskeletal pain in ages. I don't know if ever. We always dig into topics like adrenals and leaky gut and, you know, these really complicated things. But really, as chiropractors, as well as naturopaths and tr naturopathic trainees, we still consider back pain and musculoskeletal pain sort of our bread and butter. And, um, and DBC is no different from that. We're still chiropractors and we're still pretty proud of spinal manipulation and the things that it can do, not only for things like back pain, but for other uh, areas of the body and also other more internal problems. So really great of Dr. Stacy to sort of refresh us on the concept of back pain and some of the different things involved in that. Uh, timely, uh, a timely article that I found in the New York Times today uh, is entitled, For Bad Backs, It May Be Time to Rethink Biases Against Chiropractors. Imagine that. I know, I know, it's great. So uh, in, in, interesting in this article, who, who, it's written by an MD physician, and it sounds begrudging. Like the tone of the article is very, okay, you know, that sort of, we'll, we'll talk, but the, but the data's there. And finally, the data is up to the par that the M MD community cannot ignore it any longer. Hence, articles like this that we're starting to see, which is really exciting. Now, whenever we're talking about a treatment strategy for back pain or any sort of treatment strategy, it's really important that it's effective, it's important that it's safe, and it's Im important that it's cost effective, right? And so, um, this article addresses a little bit of the research that's out there and um, it, interesting a little segment I'll read a couple a little blurbs from this uh, but this MD physician says he never once considered referring a patient for spinal manipulation even though he's looked at everything else he'd never considered that and he says it appears I may have been mistaken <laughs> which is about as close to as an apology I think is you're ever gonna get uh, it says, for initial treatment of lower back pain, so they're talking about a very small, you know, uh, indication for this, it may be time for me and other physicians to rethink our biases. And he goes along to say that um, spinal manipulation seems to be, which it is, as effective as many other more medical therapies that we prescribe and as safe, if not safer, which I thought was a pretty cool thing for them to admit, is that some of these things... Uh, that they're doing, prescribing medications, injections, surgery, are actually are maybe less safe than the kind of treatments that we do here. Um, so he talked a little bit about um, some of the old data that was a little bit rusty, I would say. Um, chiropractic medicine has not really gotten a ton of funding to do research in the past for a lot of reasons. Um, but recently they've kind of upped their game as, as far as doing ran, randomized controlled trials. And they uh, sampled 15 of these things, uh, these trials, uh, about 1,700 patients in this sampling. Uh, and they, did, they were able to show that spinal manipulation caused an improvement in pain and also improvement in function. So that's something you often don't get a twofer, right? You often will get one or the other. But thankfully with, with spinal manipulation, something that we've known for a long time, you get both. And the research is showing that as well. Um, they also studied the, the safety of these uh, treatments and they found that there were zero serious events, adverse events reported at all. So that's not something that most studies can show is that there really were no downsides whatsoever and that's in a, you know, 15 different trials. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then in addition they showed that in general, users of complementary and alternative medicine spend less overall for back pain than users of only traditional medicine. So even though it costs a little more than a bottle of ibuprofen, over time they showed that people who are here at DBC, people using chiropractic medicine, people 
seeking out alternatives actually save money in the long run. So I thought that was really cool that, they, that this article addressed all three of those things, the effectiveness, the cost effectiveness, and the safety. So hopefully these kind of articles will spur people to overcome some of their prejudices and biases uh, and also seek out the kind of treatment that we have here at DBC, not just chiropractic, but a lot of different um, strategies specifically for treating back pain is what we're going to be talking about today. So thought I would share that with you. Um, if you've got chiropractic non-believers in your friend or family circle, point to this one. This is a good article for them. It's a major publication and um, even if it is kind of begrudging, I think that the physician who wrote it gives a fair assessment of, of what we're looking at and what we can do. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Stacy. Again, thanks for being here. Thank you. Remember, was that in New York Times? Mm hmm Yes, actually. Well, hello. For those that don't know me, I'm Dr. Stacy. Um, I have been here at DVC over 12 years now. Um, originally, a little bit of my story, since most don't know. Um, for three years before I actually came here, I worked in a straight chiropractic office. Um, in straight chiropractic office, you know, you see patients sometimes up to three, five times a week. You do that for quite a few months, then you back it down, and you, then it goes weekly. And then slowly you'll get to monthly, but that takes about a year for most patients to get there. So they tend to run like what they call specials, um, where you can buy it as a package, um, which was great. You know, I, I like seeing my patients, but it seemed like they kept coming in with the same thing over and over and over again and it kept getting frustrating because even though we would just we would adjust we would, didn't talk about diet we didn't talk about exercise as much as we needed to so it kind of got to the point where I was like okay either I'm not going to do this anymore or I'm going to find something that works because I feel like patients aren't getting everything they need so that's how I ended up here working with the entire model, just not just chiropractic. So for us, chiropractic alone is not the only thing, but it is a very wonderful thing. So that's really why we're going to focus tonight on just more like back pain. So what is back pain? Chronic back pain is considered something that's been around for at least 12 weeks or longer. Acute, they say, falls within about four to six weeks. Why the six to 12 weeks doesn't come in there, we don't know, but <laughs> I would still consider chronic at that point. Things that are involved, um, anything that has to do with the body, right? Muscles, tissues, intervertebral discs, and the spine. Injuries that happen, most people know of sprain strains. Those are pretty common, obviously muscles and connective tissue. Sciatica is a very common one that patients will come in with and sometimes it can be true sciatica, sometimes it's not, carpal tunnel. Another big one that we come up with that actually comes from the back and I'm considering back from head to tail, okay? Um, and then intervertebral disc, uh, you can get anywhere between a herniation where you're getting a, the disc actually being pushed out in between the vertebra or an actual rupture where a piece of the disc will break away, which usually is a surgery issue at that point. Other causes of back pain, these are things that most people miss when you're, when you're dealing with back pain. It's going to be infections, tumors, kidney stones, things that are deeper. But as we will talk here in just a minute, the body is all interconnected. We have found that out a lot through DBC. Most patients realize that as you work with food, your body feels better. Everything's connected. So predisposing factors for back pain. These are things that can make it worse or more likely increase the likelihood of having back pain. Most people know of inflammatory diseases of the joints. This would be rheumatoid arthritis, one of the biggest ones, psoriatic arthritis. Fibromyalgia, which um, Dr. Kate and I were talking earlier and I said, you know, this is actually something, yes, that can be create, creation of back pain, but really ultimately it's nutritional depletions within the body, right? So affecting other structures. Osteoporosis, big one. If you have weak bones, you're, they're not as able to stay in place where they should be. They break easier, all of that good stuff. Most of you have a copy of this in front of you. So this is our friendly spine. We'll call this Sid. So Sid here, this is what Sid should look like. This is what we should, all should look like naturally, okay? We have curves in our spine. We have a lordosis, a kyphosis, and another lordosis. These are things that are very important to natural movement of the spine. When you see a lot of people with their head forward, that's an eight pound bowling ball on top of the neck. It's meant to be held on a reverse C curve, or on a C curve, right? So if that C curve is not held together, 
what you're doing is you're putting pressure on the back of the vertebra back here, which will create osteoarthritis. Okay? The one cool thing about the spine, well, there's lots of cool things. Did you know that there's one structure really in the body that's encased in bone? It's your nervous system. So your brain and your nervous system are all encased in bone. Two things that we cannot replace at all, right? We can replace our knees, we can transplant hearts, we can do a lot of things with organs. We have not been able to completely transplant any of the spine yet, okay? Or obviously the brain, right? So, very great thing, brain, spinal canal, goes through it encased in bone. What are these little things? Do we know what those little guys are, the little yellow guys sticking out? Any idea? Go ahead, Dr. Kate. Nerve roots. Nerve roots. Okay, nerve roots come out of every vertebra. These nerves go to every place in the body. So each one is, is going to a specific area within the body. Whether that innervates an organ, whether it innervates muscle, connective tissue, those things are very important. So every hole, as you notice on the bottom, they're very large. This is where most people actually have a lot of pain from the back is because these nerves start to get compressed over time. Poor posture one of the big things. Poor footwear. We don't talk a lot about footwear as often as we need to, but footwear really creates a lot of what goes on with our back. If we have fallen arches, if we have too high of arches, that can actually put pressure on the back. If we have a poor core, you're going to actually be creating problems within your back. You're risking injury at all times because of that. Sid, you're moving. Hold it together here, big guy. So, Sid's falling apart on me. Falling apart. So, these nerves all come out. See this little red thing coming down the front? This is your artery, right? So we have the abdominal aorta comes up from the front, runs all the way up through here. Well, as it comes up through the neck to get to the brain, it actually comes through the cervical vertebra on the side. So this is where one, one thing patients will always say, you know, I've heard of a person having a stroke, getting an adjustment. Very rare, but can happen, right? Because of these artery. As you look, they sit on top of that C1 artery and that goes right into the brain. So they dip up like this. So if you have any placking in there, if you have weak arteries, that's something that could happen. So there's tests that we do and we check eyes a lot. You'll see us looking at your eyes quite a bit for a reason because you can actually see how this blood flow is working by different tests that we can do to check to see if that artery is, is compromised whatsoever, okay? So as you see on your little sheet, it'll tell you what areas go to where, symptoms that can actually go with that. So these are very, very important when you're thinking about, well, I have pain down my hands, because carpal tunnel, one of the biggest things that we see, patients will complain about carpal tunnel, most of the time it's coming from your neck. And a lot of times we'll actually do stretches called a wrist wand to stretch out the forearms and the shoulders, because you take the pressure off the nerve and the vessels and you can actually get rid of carpal tunnel. Most of our patients, very few of them, maybe 1% have to go in for surgery because it's true carpal tunnel. Okay? So very, very important. We absolutely love this. So something that chiropractors will talk about a lot about is the subluxation complex. I lovingly refer to myself in this office as the black sheep, therefore the black coat tonight. Um, <laughs> because I went to Logan College of Chiropractic. Dr. Kate and Dr. Denbor went, both went to National. And we always joke that my um, chiropractic school was a lot more philosophical based, which basically means we talk a lot more about the subluxation complex. So subluxation, sub means less, luxation, dislocation, right? So less than a dislocation is what this is. So when you get a vertebra that rotates out of place, putting pressure on a nerve, that is called a subluxation. When we adjust, we take the pressure off the nerve, we realign the spine. Happy spine, happy life. I know it's not the same. <laughs> but, you know, you have to make up your own stuff as you go along. All right, so, as you know, we are very research-based. I love looking at research for patients. So, one of the things with back pain, neck or full back, things that can affect it that we can do every day to support and help ourselves. Drinking water. Why is water so important? Most of the cells in the body have water. Exactly, exactly. I always tell my, my youngsters, you know, how much the earth's surface is water? We need to drink like we need for the earth's surface because our body requires that to help our cells function. So, if you're dehydrated, 
you can actually create more fat percentage because your body is stressed with all these toxin loads that we take in via the air, food, or water, correct? So if you have a higher total body fat ratio and a lower total body water ratio, you can get a higher fat mass and that's associated with neck and shoulder pain. Wow. So with that, if you stay hydrated, one of the things that patients will tell me is, man, my back, my joints don't hurt anymore. Your body needed the hydration because when we are toxic, it has to go somewhere. It can create a headache, it can create joint pain, it can create back pain, it can create muscle aches and pains. Very important that water helps to pull toxins out. Sleep is another big one. Um, <coughs> if we don't get enough sleep, you're more likely to have back pain. What does your body do at night while you're sleeping? Repair. Correct. It basically goes through an entire repair mode. When we're sick, we want to sleep. And that's because that's the time that the body has to conserve its energy and it can go through the repair a lot faster while we're sleeping than while we're up and moving around. That's why it's so important when we are sick to take downtime, help the body out, give it what it needs to help heal. So trends show that overall frequency of low back pain was increased during decreasing your sleep duration. The other thing, obviously, back pain will also make us not want to sleep because we're painful, we have to get up, we have to move, right? What else are we doing? Have we looked at, just like that MD had said, maybe chiropractic might be an option. There are a lot of patients who really, the, I think the common misnomer that I run into is, well, once you can start going to a chiropractor, you always have to go. Well, let's be honest. <laughs> How often do we go and do not so smart things <laughs> and create problems with our bodies. If we're sitting at a desk all day, what does this posture do? Did I just lose my shoulders? My chest is now encompassed. My lungs have less area to breathe. My gut is compromised because there's not enough blood flow getting to it. And my head just moved forward. Sitting up straight. This is one of the reasons we talk a lot about chin tucks, which we're going to cover here a little later. I don't want to take away Blake's fun. Um, so Little things are what we can do to support ourselves, but we cause damage every day of our lives. Some of it has to do with our work posture, some of it has to do with the way we drive. I always love watching people when they drive because I see this all the time. Just going around, I'm like, oh, you're poor C1. And as a chiropractor, I probably stare at patients' posture more than anything else. And I think, man, all the things that we're not doing naturally, even at school, like one of the things is, how many times do you see kids slouching and writing and falling asleep on their desk? Worst posture ever. And we don't really talk about ergonomics to kids. We don't talk about water. We don't talk about all these things. So it's our job as chiropractors, as parents, as family members to discuss why it's important to do that. We have what they call texting neck now. Okay, well that's no different than this, right? <laughs> so basically it's, it's no different than us being on, on a computer all the time. So posture makes a big difference, but that's going to affect how you sleep and hydration will affect how your body can heal. So your body has every, you were given this innate intelligence and that's one of the things that we're taught. Um, there's one, my favorite, my favorite principle in chiropractic, I believe is principle number seven, if I remember correctly because I was drilled into me while I was at school. There is no process that does not require time. Everything that we do over time will either degenerate or heal us. It just depends on which way you're treating your body. Your body is basically a very wonderful piece of art. And it depends on how well you treat it, whether or not you make it more priceless or you make it more like junk. Okay? That's why we talk a lot about food here. That's why we talk a lot about stress relief, those kind of things. That's why our health coaches are busy. That's why we have a lot of issues with food. It's because most of us go, well, I only live once. I hate that thought process because, yeah, you do live once. But how do you want to live while you're here? Do you want to live with less stress? Do you want to have a better quality of life? Or do you want to just enjoy all those things that we think are so wonderful and making everything lovely and then later on have chronic disease? It really makes a difference. So as you pick up that fork, because you do the wrong exercise, think about that. OK. So, oh, look. So grade of sleep deprivation and pain intensity. So the higher the pain, the less we sleep. All these things make a difference as we go through. So we're going to make you guys get up. So everybody stand up with us. We're going we're gonna to move and shake a little bit, OK? 
So while we're standing here, while well, Blake's coming up, because we got Blake here, our fitness guy. So as you guys all know, we have DBC Fit, and anytime you're talking about the spine, I have to have Blake here. Okay? So I want everybody to just kind of cross your arms, cross your chest, just kind of stretch out, give yourself a big hug. You know, put them above your head, get some blood flowing. Let's move our feet a little. They didn't ready? know they were getting a good workout when I they know, came. I know, they had no did idea, they? did they? <laughs> All right, are you ready to do this? I'm ready, let's okay. do this. Okay, Blake, you're on. All right, so my name is Blake and I run the gym downstairs, which is DBC Fit. It's our uh, rehab center. And back pain is one thing that I treat all the time down there. Back pain is just so common. Um, so what I put together here is a list of some of my favorite exercises to kind of treat whole back pain. So as you uh, learned from Dr. Stacy, there's a lot of different conditions that can contribute to back pain. So this is to kind of over, overall kind of hit everything just a little bit. Uh, the big thing with Exercise and stretching is kind of stimulating blood flow to these areas because blood flow is so important. It's carrying oxygen and nutrients to these muscles. So let's get started. The first one, the chin tuck. This is a great one for kind of your cervical vertebrae through here. So if you're having neck pain, uh, another thing that Dr. Stacy had mentioned is, yeah, it's so common, right? Everything this today is cell phone, computer, right in front of us here. So we get so much kind of curling posture. So we need to straighten that back out. So one thing I do that's very simple, and you can do this just sitting in your car or if you're in a waiting room, you do what I call a chin tuck. And it's kind of this retraction of your head as you're tucking your chin down. So you just kind of, I sometimes like to use my hands. I just kind of put them right on my chin and I just push back a little bit and tuck my chin down. It's almost like you're trying to give yourself a double chin in your neck yeah. there. And you should just kind of feel, you know, just gentle behind the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Try so to keep your shoulders down when you do this. Don't let them come up. Yeah, that's another big piece is whenever you're doing all this stuff, you want to be nice and proud. So your shoulders are nice and back. You're like a superhero. That's what I call it, superhero chest. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty easy, again, something that you can do, you know, if you're just sitting in the car, or you're in the waiting room. Uh, the next one here is a hamstring stretch. So what I like to do is instead of bending over to stretch my hamstrings, this is just a little bit safer uh, for your back if you have like a bulging disc or something. So this what I want you guys to up. do is turn around, and if you can, only if you can, just gently put a leg right up on that chair. Now the trick to this stretch is I can see a couple of you guys kind of have your toes pointed. I want you to curl your toes in. Pull your toes to your nose. You guys feel that stretch a little bit in your hamstring? Yeah, so this is an important stretch. You guys can relax or try it on the other leg. Try it on the other leg there. It's got to do both sides. You want to make it even. <laughs> Don't this is an important hammer. stretch because your back pain can make your hamstrings tighter and your hamstrings being tighter makes your back pain even worse and then your back pain being worse makes your hamstrings even tighter so it's this terrible cycle so you got to kind of treat them both so go ahead and relax from that okay now everybody take a seat all right next yep. stretch So this is another great one you can do in like a waiting room, you know, or if you're just chatting with somebody, you don't really care what they're saying, you know, you can just <laughs> stretch now. So, so what you're going to do is cross one leg right over top of the other. And I put that ankle, whatever leg I have on top, put that ankle right on top of your knee there. And if your knee is way up here, then you know that your piriformis is really tight. So the goal, yeah, just sitting, you should be kind of flat but just put a little gentle pressure on your knee with one hand and then again superhero chest and just bring those shoulders down to your knees if you can and sometimes just putting pressure on that knee is all you need superhero chest don't forget to stick mm -hmm. your chest out you guys feeling that one kind of in the hip a little bit yeah <laughs> if you can't bend forward just stay straight up you'll still get a stretch out of it yeah, this is the piriformis is a muscle that kind of runs right in between your glutes and uh, you have your sciatic nerve that runs through there. So if this muscle is really tight, now you have these two muscles that are kind of clamping together on that nerve. So if you get pain kind of in that glute area, this is definitely a good stretch that you'll want to do. 
All right, then I have me rocking. You don't have and to do this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I took these pictures so we're not all laying on the floor here. Um, this is a great kind of, it's not really a stretch or an exercise, it's kind of something in between. It's kind of like a mobilization technique. And this works really good for SI kind of dysfunction if they're really locked up and getting those hips moving again. Uh, SI is sacroiliac. Yeah, it's a joint uh, in between your sacrum and your ilium, which is that big wing bone of your pelvis. So what you do is, it's a little hard to see, I guess, on here, but I have my knees, I'm laying like this, and I have my knees touching the floor, and then I just rock from side to side. This one's so, a great one to do in bed in the morning before you get up. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. I just a couple times throughout the day, I set my watch for like three minutes and I'll just do this back and forth, back and forth for three minutes. Just nice and gentle. It's just a mobilization technique. So, you need your all right, then this one, these are what I call swimmers. This is a great exercise for the paraspinals. You'll want to do this with a ball um, because holding yourself up, if you have a lot of back pain, is probably going to be pretty hard. So, all right. So what I do is I put my ball right on the floor and I kind of go right in the middle of my body. And I know we don't really swim like this, but you kind of get the idea where your, you know, <laughs> arms and legs are moving back and forth. And so you want to do it with your opposite arm and leg. So don't do it with the same side. A little bit of a mental game too, because a lot of times you'll all of a sudden go, oh, same side, but back and forth, oh, see? <laughs> back and forth. So this is a really good um, exercise now that kind of stimulates blood flow to those muscles. And again, that yeah, blood flow is important because it's carrying oxygen, which is anti-inflammatory. We want to get that oxygen to those inflamed tissues. And one of the most common ones we'll do for patients that come in with low back pain. It really works. This is an awesome one that I make sure to do a couple times a day myself because yeah, like we were saying, right? Everything is here. So what tends to happen is these muscles get really tight. Whatever, wherever you spend your time, whatever your muscles get used to, they get used to that length. So if you spend a lot of time here, well, your pecs, your anterior deltoid, they get used to being that length. So they just stay right there. So before long, you know, you're just stuck. So we got to open that back up because this is a position of pain. This is a position of health, confidence. That's what we want. So with this, you got to find yourself a corner, which patients tell me is the hardest thing is finding an empty corner without furniture or a lamp. But you can find a corner, you can make one. So two different positions you can do this in. The first one, I kind of have my hands down low here and you just walk into the corner. You don't want to lean too much because that's going to put make the muscle active and be more of a strain. So it's down here and you can just gently walk into the corner. The second one there, I have my arms fully extended and then I walk into the corner. This is one that's great because you'll actually feel it probably all the way down to your fingertips. So both will, both will hit kind of the pec and anterior deltoid muscles, which are the ones that kind of tend to get tight through here. So that just really helps to open up everything and keep that confident looking <laughs> <laughs> stance that we want. <laughs> I'm going to get you a cape. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Next slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, and the last one here is a plank. And this is going to be more of an exercise than a stretch. And I put up two photos, the wrong way and the right way. I see a lot of people doing it this way. You can kind of see there's that curvature in my spine. You want to get rid of that and activate these abdominal muscles and kind of force that lower part of your back up into the ceiling. Okay, you want your spine to be nice and straight. So what this exercise is doing is it's uh, working all of your core muscles. If your core muscles are weak, that's going to allow your spine to just slip in and out of place and then you're going to be in seeing Dr. Stacy. So, which is, it's great to see you, but you know. I, <laughs> so that's why I put this exercise up. And this one's kind of challenging. I know not everybody can just do it on their feet. 
So a great modifying move to do this is do it on your knees. So just your knees are touching and then you're on your elbows. And then after you get good with that, you know, maybe you go 10 seconds, work your way up to 20 seconds, work your way up to 40 seconds, then switch to going with your feet. And same thing, if you can't do it for a minute, that's fine, who cares? Go for 10, then go for 15, go for 20, and you work your way up to as long as you can go. And this is- You can also do this against the wall for those that can't get on the floor. Mm-hmm, yep. So those are some of my top picks for exercises and stretches. Um, these are things that really you can do every single day. Um, for myself, I know I had a terrible history of back pain. I mean, I was in eighth grade, and this is how I was walking, because my back was so bad. I mean, I was eighth grade, super young. But just through educating myself with diet and exercise, I was able to climb out of that hole. I mean, it was, it was a long period of time. It was two years of my life that I basically lost, because I was just so much pain waddling around. But through exercise, through diet, you can do this and this is stuff that even if you don't have back pain if you're sitting here and you have no pain still good to do it anyway <laughs> so yeah without uh, further ado i'm going to turn it back over to dr stacy right. and don't forget blake does you can follow him on facebook he does do a dbc fit of the week so watch for him yes quite, yes our uh, fitness quite tip quite entertaining of the week. sometimes <laughs> just like his uh captain captain i'm gonna call him captain america now <laughs> you can't be Iron Man. I'm going to have to give you Captain America for a while. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Blake. So all those, we always try to give you things that you can do all the time. So, you know, um, with my patients, I try to set goals and give them little things that they can do. I have a lot of patients that sit at a desk. So this month has been the squat challenge. So every time they get up, I tell them before you sit down, go to squat five times at your chair. And by the end of the day, I bet you've done 50. So we've got quite a bit of time and everybody says, I don't have time to exercise. It's all about the little things. It doesn't have to be a 20 to 30 minute workout plan. It can be walking faster to your car. As you see Dr. Denmore, he'll sprint to his car. The reason why is he's just trying to get his heart rate up. Every little bit makes a difference. Think about that every time you're trying to look at health where just every little bit pays off. Just like deep breathing in the car. That little bit amount of deep breathing helps to decrease stress, resets the nervous system, and helps your body go back into parasympathetic nervous system, which is relaxation mode, which most of us struggle to find. So those pieces are part of how to help heal your back, okay? Foods, you know you couldn't get out of here unless we talked about food. <laughs> so I pulled up some that just have some research with them. So grapes, okay, yes, it is on the dirty dozen. Remember, <coughs> grapes should be organic in nature because their skin allows things to come in. So if they're being sprayed with pesticides, yes, you're going to get every single bit of that into that watery amount of grape. So, of course, we want to go for organic as possible. So, a lot of the research that I found, a lot of this is off the active form. You know, resveratrol was the big one that came out. Gosh, I feel like it's been 10 years now. Um, you know, wine. Everybody's like, oh, red wine. I can have red wine as resveratrol. <laughs> It's very good for the body. Antioxidant load, right? Research shows that it can help repair intervertebral disc and the cartilage within the body. Hey, you know what? Good time to eat some grapes. Organic. Ginger. I love ginger. I use this a lot for patients with any type of gut issues. Like if they come in and they have nausea or they have gut pain, well, I'll recommend ginger. And usually fresh grated ginger is where I'll go and I'll have them steep it in some hot water to make a ginger tea. Research for this, a lot of it comes back to dysmenorrhea and digestion. Back to SID, right? Intervertebral discs. One thing we didn't talk about a lot with SID. Intervertebral discs, these little spongy guys right in the middle, okay? You have blood flow to that disc till about the age of 24 to 26. After that, what happens? What keeps that healthy? Does anybody know? Movement. Correct movement. Each vertebra moves in six different ranges of motion. You have flexion, extension, lateral bending, and rotation. Okay? All that keeps that spine moving. Okay? So, why would ginger make dysmenorrhea go away? If you're working with the uterus, how would that help the back pain? Comes out back here. The nerve to the uterus comes out back here. So if you take the inflammation out of the uterus, where are you going to take the back pain out? Down here, right? Gut, 
It's going to be anywhere between here. So all these things are effective. So if you work with one thing, you will work with another. It's a guarantee. Turmeric. Turmeric. Does anybody know what turmeric is? Okay, we use it in curry, right? It's one of the spices in curry. It's lovely. It's one of the reasons it helps with intestinal health. It has so much research on how it can take inflammation out of the intestinal tract. It helps to coat it, helps take the inflammation down. That's going to affect the spine through here, okay? Fish. I came across one obscure research that said, you know, EPA and DHA has, it has been known, like people talk about whenever they take fish oils, that it'll increase their joint pain and their back pain. Not enough research on that to really prove that that's correct, but that's what they've said. It was really what the research article said, but I was like, it is really true. What lines every single one of your cells? It's fat. If it's inflammatory fat, then obviously we have inflammatory cells. EPA is anti-inflammatory, so that's going to have anti-inflammatory cells. It's going to take the inflammation out of the body. Your brain is made up of fat. Very important to have good fats. That's why we preach a lot here in this office, good fats, good fats, good fats, because that's part of what helps keep the body healthy. These nerves, the ability to have any conduction down these nerves is because there's a fatty bilayer around these. That's what helps the conduction go. When you get breaks in nerves, it's usually because somebody has fat deprivation in their body. Okay? So, more likely to have nerve pain without fish oils. Very important. Fish oil, of course, uh, everybody, let's make sure it's sustainably fought, used and, and raised. And then, of course, it's tested for mercury, arsenic, and lead. Always have to go for those three things. PCBs are nice, too. Not everybody does all that testing. I put the, the last one here because this is in my, my thought process for Dawn and Jamie, my, my lovely health coaches who do a world with my patients, and whole food. If it comes in a package, it may not be awesome, okay? So if it has more than the ingredient that's actually in the package, we may want to rethink it, okay? So whole food, if it comes the way it is in nature, it's a great food for us. That's what helps to sustain our body. Processed foods create more inflammation. They break down faster to sugar, which creates inflammation. Sugar is probably one of the worst things we've ever introduced into our entire food system. I'm sure there's others, and I could go on and on and on and on, but we'd have a lot of time to talk about that. But sugar is terrible for us. So please be a label watcher. Look for everything. How many grams of sugar in a serving size? Not just look at the grams of sugar. Look at the serving size. How many of those are there? Has anybody ever looked at the sweet tea that you get out of the... The gas station, how many grams of sugar in a sweet tea? It's more than your daily dose that you should ever get. <laughs> Just gonna go from that, and that's in the one serving. So let's be honest, watch for those things. I, every day I get to look at everybody's nutrients and, and what they take in and different supplements that they're eating or they're using. And one of the things, especially for kids, it's one of the things that everybody will go to is like a sugar-coated gummy. That's really not good for you. We're not trying to increase the inflammation. <coughs> one, many that I look at, I'm like, you've already reached their grams of sugar in one day with just the vitamins that you're giving them. That's not mm -hmm. healthy. That's not what we're looking for. So remember, food is your friend. It does help to decrease inflammation in the body. Always, always important. My least favorite subject to talk about is mattresses and pillows with patients um, because the main reason is every one of us is so unique. Big things that I like everybody to take home. I wrote down three different mattresses that, um, you know, I surveyed my patients. I was like, what do you sleep on? What do you like? What are you thinking about? So these are the ones my patients came up with. Um, the one thing that I like about these is um, basically their return policies and what they, what they actually make their beds with, things that they don't use. Um, the purple bed, it's got a lot of, lot of goods, yays from my patients. You get 100 days to sleep on this bed. It's, this is very important. Something that's very important when you're looking at a mattress is how long do I have to sleep on it before I can return it and say it doesn't work for my body. Because just with glasses, like with your shoes, it's not the first time that you wear them that you really notice the difference. Some people can say yes the very first time, but over time, like say it feels great for a couple weeks and then we start to have problems, could it be the mattress? Probably. Maybe time to recheck firmness, different, different um, you know, whether or not it's gel, whether or not it's foam. Those are things that you want to pay attention to when you're looking at a mattress. Everybody sleeps on something different. Just know that any mattress can have problems. 
The old spring mattress is really more of a thing of the past. Um, so now you're running into more of the, the foam mattresses or the gel mattresses. Now, replacement policies on these. I will tell you, if you have it longer than 100 days, you like it, whatever, look at their replacement policies because some of them say that they actually have to be broken down about an inch before they will actually replace it. So their 10-year warranties, whatever they have on them, that is one of the things they stick by. And just because there's some breakdown, if it doesn't make that whole inch, it's not going to happen. Cool thing about some of these, um, so like the purple bed I put, this warranty shall apply if the materials of construction develop a visible indentation of the mattress greater than one inch. So that's the one I was talking about. If, if that, compared to the surrounding mattress and further recovery from load, stays there, then that's something that they will take care of for you. That's after the 100 days, okay? The nice thing about a lot of these is, especially like tough and needle, if within the first 100 nights of sleeping, sleeping you're tough and needle, you're not completely satisfied for any reason, you return it for a full refund. Those are kind of nice because you're not paying for shipping to go back. Um, I'm not sure which one of these, but one of them, um, after you sleep on it, they obviously can't sell it. So what they do is they try to find a place that um, gives it to underprivileged people. Anybody that can't afford a mattress, they give it away, which I think is really great. Um, Casper, the one thing I loved about Casper that I saw, um, and I've had lots of patients tell me that they love their Casper. It's like sleeping on air. Okay, I haven't slept on one, so I have no idea. Um, all the foams in the Casper, ma Casper mattress are certi pure US certified. So this is one of the things that patients look for a lot. Let's be honest. They don't want ozone depleters in there. They don't want the PBDE flame retardants. They don't want mercury. They don't want lead. They don't want the outgassing that these things have that are very potential. When you open that mattress and it needs to air out for about a day, whoo, those are some outgasses that go on there. So these are low VOCs. It's hard to find things that don't have all that. Usually they're made in other countries. So that's one of the things. They also have, um, I believe, a 100-night return policy as well. Um, return it for you know, your full refund as you go with that. Free shipping as well. So these are just some of the, the picks that patients had told me. There are many other beds. I know Dr. Dunbar sometimes will tell, hey, go to IKEA. He likes his IKEA bed. I slept in an Ikea bed. I love my Ikea bed. Remember, everything has a lifespan. Now they're saying about eight years. I think that's so then people hopefully by 10 years <laughs> decide that they're going to get a different mattress. You spend a third of your life in your bed. You're supposed to get about eight hours of sleep. So eight times three, 24 hours, one third, right? So <laughs> one third of our life is spent in our bed. It's very important to have a good bed. Pillows. Pillows are tough. You know, in the, in the chiropractic world, they talk about the, the cervical pillow. I've slept on every cervical pillow. My neck hates them. I have so much damage to my neck. I really have a reverse cervical curve. So um, the cervical pillows actually hurt me more than they help me. I found for me, just a nice feather pillow works great. Some people tell me they like their my pillow. Some people like their other pillows. You know, honestly, if I get a nice bed, I don't even have to have a pillow underneath my head. I'm quite happy that way. But not everybody can sleep that way. Honestly, big point, if you sleep on your back, your legs should be bent, right? Takes the stress off the spine so it's not in an overextension when we're laying on our back. When you lay on your side, ideally a pillow between the knees. Your pillow should be as wide as your shoulder to your ear. That's what supports you to keep in line. We're always looking at alignment, alignment, alignment. So, little things. Nothing's going to fit the same person, right? So it's just like why we have so many different types of clothes, why we have so many different types of shoes. Everybody's different in what they choose. Firm, medium, firm pillow top. I never recommend a pillow top. Once the pillow top breaks down, you're done. Usually that's two to three years in. You can't take that pillow top off. I would rather err on the side of caution and get more of a firm mattress because if it's too firm and it bothers me, I get that little crate soft topper that I can put on there. By the time that thing breaks down, my mattress is the exact firmness that I like and I'm good to go. Then I don't have to buy two mattresses because by the time the medium firm breaks down on me, then I'm basically at five years and I'm thinking, man, I could have had three more years out of this bed. But so little things. I like a firm mattress. I can sleep on the floor. I know the staff has found me sleeping on the floor many times and wonder what the heck's wrong with me. And I'm like, it's comfortable down here. But when you're a child of three and you're the youngest and you don't get any choice of where you sleep, because sometimes you sleep like this in the middle of the car seats, that's the way you sleep. You learn to sleep anywhere. So. I prefer firm. I like firm. Some people like soft. It just depends on what works for your body. Okay? That's a big one. The one piece that I did not talk about tonight is orthotics. 
we forget a lot about our footwear, right? Feet are so important to back pain. If you do not take care of your feet, you will not have a good back. Shoes make all the difference in the world, especially my runners, anybody who exercises. The exercise shoes, just because they look good, doesn't mean they're still good. If you get so many miles on them, it's time to get new ones. Many people will run in orthotics. Orthotics still do fall apart. After about a year to two years, you will need to replace them, even if they're the hard ones, because your body has changed. Things change, your muscle changes. So as you're continually doing exercises, say you're doing something with Blake and you're trying to strengthen a right hip, the orthotics that I had with the, with the imbalanced hip, when I get strength and balance, I need to replace my orthotics and get them to work with my correct alignment that I now have with the muscles that have changed. Exercise is wonderful. It's very good for us. We all have a dominant side. It's something that we have to work on. But as you do that, everything in life does change with that. You can always look at the wear pattern on your shoes of how you wear, which side you wear more, and that will kind of give you an idea of what's happening with your <coughs> spine, okay? Spine is 100% important. No matter what we, we talk about at DBC, we don't talk about the spine enough. We do know this, but there's so many other things that patients don't know when it comes to food and nutrition that we a lot of times will put that as, a, oh, by the way, we need to adjust you because that does help support your health. Because it does. Medicare has done studies that patients that do get adjusted once a month have less health care bills. It's very true. That came out about eight years ago. So, and obviously, um, Dr. Kate had talked about the New York Times um, article. That's been out for a long time. We have known that those that pay a little bit more out of pocket, usually for their chiropractic treatment, don't need as much other health care treatments because their bodies wear and tear better than others. Okay? So, awesome. Good. All right. Next month, Dr. Denbor is going to present. He is heading out to the International or the Functional Medicine Institute's uh, yearly seminar uh, in LA. So he'll be coming back because they're talking about brain plasticity while they're out there. So this is going to be really awesome. Alzheimer's is getting a huge new rev up in research. We are finding more and more and more about the brain and Alzheimer's. So he's going to be talking. I'm sorry that June came out really small. Um, June 5th, which is the first Monday of the month at 6.30, he will be here with um, I don't know how um, much sleep he'll have had at that point because he'll probably be getting home on Sunday, but he'll be raring and turn to go to teach you guys all about what he's learned. So look forward to that. We are very excited about it. Um, I unfortunately am not able to go this year, so I am going to be sitting on his coattails. What did you learn? What did you learn? Did you get the CDs? I need the CDs. So then we can all keep up on it. So it's a wonderful time for us and we're very excited to have you guys. So thank you for coming. If you guys have questions, please go ahead. If I get up in the morning and get on my foam, foam roller and mm -hmm. roll, sometimes it'll crack. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing, bad thing? It's not a bad thing. The body, as you stretch the muscles out, a lot of times you can hear popping. The problem when popping occurs is when you force it or you feel pain. So just rolling 10, 20 times in the morning? Not harming anything. You're loosening thing, your body up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Stretching in the morning is wonderful. When you actually see animals, what do they do before they get up? Why? Helps to keep them flexible, right? We should really take more time in paying attention to the animal counterpart. They don't have an agenda. They know what they need to do to take care of their bodies. One of the reasons I'm an animal chiropractor as well, because I love animals. You adjust them once and you get to see the change almost immediately when they walk away from me. Because their bodies naturally know how to heal. We have this educated brain that they don't have. And our educated brain keeps saying, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. That's why most patients struggle with constantly having to come in to get adjusted. It's because we don't take time to allow the adjustment to settle in. We don't stretch afterwards. We won't go home and exercise to help hold that adjustment. Those things are important. Water after your adjustment, huge. Drink water. We are releasing toxins when we adjust you. Very important. Good question. Anything else? Yeah. About the mattresses, I didn't understand about the, what was the first one that you had? The purple? Mm -hmm. Yes. Tempur-Pedic would actually be more of your foam mattresses. Now, not as many people sleep on a Tempur-Pedic anymore because originally when Tempur-Pedic came out, it was the top of the line. People had problems with it because it had to have a certain temperature in the room or it was hard as rock until your body warmed up to it. Gentlemen had an issue with it because it doesn't dissipate heat, 
So they would sweat all night. Now women loved it, that tend to be cold because they were like, oh, this thing is great. It keeps me warm all night long. But the men would complain about it. So more of your new mattresses are mixed with foam, different types of foam, or they have gel with them that dissipate heat. So Tempur-Pedic is still around. It's still one of the mattresses out there. Um, but as with all foam mattresses, I will say you will want to get the waterproof cover because if you do sweat, you can actually create mold buildup in your, in your mattress. So that's why they recommend those covers. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, please. I tend to have uh, chronic lower back pain and it is worse or I can feel it when I cough. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure I mean, how that's all connected, but I'm like, <clears throat> even cautious when I cough because it hurts my mm -hmm. lower back. Sometimes worse than other times, but I'm not sure. Usually that means whenever you have, um, that creates intervertebral pressure. So it's usually a disc that's starting to push out. So you may have vertebra that's squishing the disc or the disc may actually be displaced slightly. So the exercise like Blake had taught on the ball with the swimmers is wonderful for that. That is a very great exercise for that one. Okay, okay? yeah. Anything else? All right, well thanks for coming guys. Enjoy your night, thanks for braving the world.